All right. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our very own Ahmad Reza, who will give us uh, will talk to us about deformation spaces, rescaled bundles, and their applications in geometry and analysis. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, even so, uh, people in this seminar usually with um, representation theory background, I try at least give some uh, basically topics, cover some topics that might be related. Uh, for example, there's Creole formula in this application that I'm going to talk about. There is going to be uh, a lot of al algebraic geometric approach. So I hope everybody at least get gain something from this talk. And um, so this talk is going to, I'm going to start talking about deformation to normal cone, deformation to normal cone. Um, uh, that I'm going to talk about, at least I give you an example of a picture. An example of it in this case, you see one, a family of um, a toruses from both sides are smoothly, supposedly approaching to a cylinder in the middle. And um, this is going to be one of the examples I will later expand upon. And that's going to be um, the prototype that I'm going to uh, later on um, use. So this the, the, the roots of this deformation to normal cone is in algebraic geometry as what I'm uh, working differential, ge differential geometry. So um, let me also ch change the single view so everybody <laughs> change of page. So basically this is used as an analog of tubular neighborhood embedding that we have in differential geometry, but that's what the algebraic geometry use in their field. But I will be using this algebraic geometric approach still. So that point of view of spectrum characters, uh, prime basically spectrum of algebraic geometers is going to be used actually in my um, talk and in this work. So associated with an embedding of a smooth manifold that's called the small, small manifold M and the bigger manifold V. Um, so we have a normal bundle, normal bundle to be the quotient of uh, tangent bundle of the ambient manifold, uh, which is V uh, restricted to M divided by that uh, tangent space of that submanifold. And the deformation to the normal cone is going to be, as a set at least, uh, and the disjoint union of that one single copy of normal bundle that you see I multiply with a zero because I'm going to emphasize the parameterized space uh, with um, basically um, copies of that ambient manifold. So a bunch of copies of ambient manifold that are parameterized by non-zero real numbers and one single um, normal, basic copy of normal bundle. And this disjoint space, of course, as a topology is actually a smooth manifold. Um, you can basically, one way to do this, you can fix a Riemannian metric G on this uh, ambient manifold. And with respect to this metric, you get a decomposition, uh, basically orthogonal decomposition of the tangent uh, bundle of V restricted to M into that tangent bundle of M and the normal bundle, basically on this orthogonal decomposition. And you can look at the exponential, the Riemannian exponential map restricted to this normal bundle under this decomposition. And it just gives you a, a tubular neighborhood embedding basically from a neighborhood of the zero section. So here I should have maybe said, this is an open basically, and this is also open uh, subsets. And those are in neighborhoods of uh, basically, uh, of for example, here M is inside this and also M also in, inside this. And you assume M goes to M uh, diffeomorphically, basically. And using this map, uh, you will uh, you can obtain basically a neighborhood, basically uh, define basically diffeomorphism. What you want to be diffeomorphism from V times W times R to the DNC in a neighborhood of the normal bundle. So let me just tell you what's happening here. Why I'm saying this give you topology. Note that this deformation to normal cone has two main parts, bunch of, one part is a multiplicative, uh, sorry, a product basically, it has a product structure, which is V times non-zero real number. So it has a smooth structure there, so there's no issue. But how to give the smooth structure and the normal bundle part of the deformation to the normal cone, as you see, I call DNC of VIM. 
um, using basically this map and I want it to be diffeomorphism. Basically this map from W times R to DNC of B times M given by this uh, formula. So this gives them a smooth structure. And with just, if you change the metric, you get a different smooth, and then you get the same smooth structure. Right? That metric choice kind of is irrelevant. So I'm just saying that um, um, this is how you obtain the topology. And one co other comment I can make also is that you can actually literally write down a uh, very nice coordinate uh, system for around each point of that normal one and then DMC as well. So it's completely possible. Anyway, so let me just go to an example of deformation to normal clone, which is kind of been non-trivial. Let's take the diagonal embedding of a circle inside its double, which is the torus. So S1 and double that delta, I mean, is diagonal embedding. And deformation to the normal cone associated with this embedding is going to be, so supposedly as a set, you need a copy of a normal bundle and bunch of copies of the, the ambient manifold here is a torus. That normal bundle in this case, as you can see here, it's I replaced it by a TS1, basically that's a tangent bundle of S1, basically. And that's the, the, the in this case, you can easily show that uh, this is uh, canonically uh, uh, isomorphic to the normal bundle in this case. So, and this the deformation to normal cone is exactly the shape that earlier I showed you. Uh, basically copies of torus. In the middle, you see TS1, which is tangent bundle of S1, which is uh, identifiable with the cylinder. So this example can be more generalized in the case that we care a lot about what we, at least in my field, known as tangent groupoid. Um, which uh, replacing that S1 with any, sub with, with any smooth manifold and look at the embedding, diagonal embedding of that manifold inside its double. Uh, and look at its deformation to a normal cone. And this deformation to a normal cone is what is known as a tangent groupoid. And I don't assume, I'm not going to assume that everybody know what the groupoid is, but at the moment, you just mostly care about this. This is a smooth manifold. So this is just a smooth manifold and um, um, uh, the groupoid structure of it, if you know what the groupoid is, it essentially comes from functor functoriality of DNC. DNC is a pretty well-behaved functor and essentially it's gonna give you a, a groupoid, basically this TM, the tangent groupoid TM is, uh, has the object space of M times R basically, as you see at the end. And, um, now, basically, over the non, it's basically a family of tangent group, uh, a family of groupoids, which also form a groupoid, smooth groupoid. And there's another version, basically, of this tangent groupoid, basically a, a light modification of it, which is we use it in the context of a uh, equivalent index formula, is relative tangent groupoid, which is uh, you start with a submanifold of that manifold. Uh, or given manifold and look at the diagonal embedding of that submanifold inside the double of that original manifold. And you take this DNC, it, it is still going to be a uh, groupoid, it's going to be smooth manifold. And uh, the groupoid this time has a different object space as you see, it's a def deformation space itself. And there's also another variant or another basic modification of the tangent groupoid is when you basically look at this m times n at this set of the pair groupoid and replacing the pair groupoid with any groupoid. Basically, if you have any given groupoid, the deformation to the normal cone gives you what is known as adiabatic groupoid. And this is, as I said, it's still a groupoid over um, that object space, which is the object space of G times R. And one other comment I wanted to also make is that there is also relative version of this as well, which I'm not going to discuss further because I don't assume everybody here knows what a groupoid is. Um, so let's just move on. So as I told you, the algebraic, um, the deformation to normal cone is come from algebraic geometry. And we are going to actually stay um, um, kind of um, loyal to that point of view. And we are going to take that point of view to actually recover the smooth structure over the formation to normal cone. So let me just explain what I mean by that. So again, start with the general embedding of a manifold M inside the uh, ambient manifold V. 
and look look at the vanishing ideal of that submanifold inside the space of smooth functions, basically. You know, I know in algebraic geometry, they, they don't use smooth functions, but uh, this is, we are living in the differential geometry world. So that's what I'm going to start with. And in differential geometry, in the algebraic geometry, they use this Ries algebra and its prime spectrum, as you see here, the definition of, uh, to define basically the deformation to a normal cost. So we are going to do exactly the same thing. We are going to define the Ries algebra of uh, Ries algebra A as to be basically this um, direct sum of uh, basically powers of this ideal with uh, a parameter T as you see uh, to, to basically add appropriate power. And this is going to, the T is just a parameter, formal parameter in, this, in the basic the space of uh, formal, basically, uh, Lorentz polynomials uh, of bit coefficient inside C infinity of V. And it turns out uh, in the work, previous work of me with Nigel Hickson, uh, my thesis advisor, that character spectrum of this algebra, of this algebra going to give you the deformation to normal cone. This is corresponds to basically the prime spectrum, basic point of view. So we don't have a prime spectrum to use in this differential geometry point of view, we use what is known as character spectrum with a character spectrum, instead of taking the prime ideals, you just take the maximum ideals. Or equivalently, you can just take a space of characters which are homomorphism from A to C, and that's why we call it a character spectrum. Um, it has a natural weak topology uh, coming from point-wise convergence. And what you see here, this topology exactly here give you actually a diffeomorphism with, already known as smooth structure. So in a sense, this big topology over this cathode spectrum gonna give you the smooth structure over the DNC. So that's an alternative way to obtain the smooth structure. So, so far everything is good because I don't hear anything in the background. I'm, am I still connected? Yeah, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, of course. What, is, what does it mean to take the negative power of an ideal? Yeah, so that's a good question. By that, I mean just, uh, so for basically I0 is the same thing as I1. So that's a good question, very, very good question. Uh, I will put it here. Here I assume I to the M2 basically negative and it's all, and also including M0 as well, basically. And we get an equal to zero is the same thing as I M itself. Oh, so, so, sorry, 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 not I M itself, as C infinity of my bad. Uh, I think I'm missing something. Uh, I taking this is C infinity of B. Oh, Basic, okay. yeah. Thank you, thank you for the question. Yeah, basically after some point, after some negative, basically the, the, all the negative powers, including also the zero power, all just going to be C infinity of B. If that makes sense. Uh, in the previous slide, you don't have to go back to yet. This uh, why yeah. is it called adiabatic? The adiabatic. Um, right. honestly, I uh, at the Good question. I, I don't have a good answer to that because uh, the, to be honest, I, I used to call it like a tangent groupoid associated with a groupoid you, like a, two years ago, but I learned later that some people in our field is called adiabatic groupoid. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I'm sorry if I don't have a good answer for that. That's I'm okay. So sure, yeah. But I, I, have a, I have a question. Of course. Uh, which is, so, so this this uh, result and so on. See, see, this seems seem to be related to the to at least in algebraic geometry to what would be the blow up of the ambient manifold at the sub manifold. So, yeah. can you say something to? Oh. There's a precise statement here that I, I'm struggling to make. But what what is the precise statement? Uh, so the blow up is essentially if you go to the picture that what it means. So basically, what you are doing, uh, you are in this picture that you see, you are blowing up along that sub-manifold S1, basically, in the di basically diagonal embedding of S1 inside S times S1, basically. And what happens is that you are going to basically zoom in, zoom into that sub-manifold, and you just see nothing but a tangent, basically, bundle of that, uh, not tangent, but the normal bundle of that sub-manifold inside S1 times S1. Does that make sense? Yes and no. So I, 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 I guess the question I'm asking, uh -huh. Is is this the deformation to the normal cone? Is it a blow up? 
So what is known as the blob itself uh, is uh, basically a quotient of a submanifold of a deformation to normal form. What is known as the blob space, for example, what you hear in the context of either Melrose, for example, or Maseo, those are quotient space of a submanifold, a, a dense submanifold deformation to normal form. In that sense, this is not exactly the blow of a space that is known. For example, in the concept of I don't know, differential geometry or uh, algebraic geometry, but um, it is a blow up in a sense that you are blowing, blowing, blowing up in the in the direction of normal directions, in the like a, I don't know, in a very rough sense. If that if that, that answer you so the blob space of what we know as a blob space, let me just write it down here is essentially going to be the DNC of V and M minus when you remove this this sub manifold out of it and you divide by the action of R non zero real numbers, and this is some it is it is going to be manifold this action is free. And this quotient gonna give you the blow up space. So that's how they are related. And also, and there, there's also another point of view I can make that DNC has a con compactification basically. Um, uh, that's my another word with Nigel Ixon, is it has a compactification, which is actually another blow up space, which is going to be the, this blow up space, but <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay. I kind of okay, feel yeah. like that's like a proj, right? You throw out the zero. And then kind of. Yeah. And yeah, it's like a proj, yeah. Right. Yes. So, oh, sorry, this, when I change it, it does go away. Okay, anyway, so I want to also make a quick remark uh, that this algebra A, uh, A of V and M, that's the Riesz algebra itself, is a sub subspace or the subalgebra of the smooth functions over this DNC, and you have like this explicit basic formula. So that was, at least for my, when I started like PhD, that was the point of view I, I had toward this research algebra. I knew very little about that with geometry then, to be honest, but later on, I had to learn a little bit more, but that was my starting point. That's how I started to basically create the smooth structure out of this formula, basically, out of this embedding. Anyway, so, but what I'm going to talk next about, I'm going to tell you how to create, uh, how to define a, diff, a, vector, a smooth vector bundle over the deformation to normal cone, given enough data. So, so we are going to basically define certain family of uh, vector bundles over deformation to normal cone known as risk scale bundle. And these type of risk scale bundle have a lot of application that is in the local, basically calculation of indexes, basically. You have like equivalent index, non-equivalent index, like Krivolo formula is one example of them, like a, a localized equivalent index formula is another example of them. And for example, we found uh, in a recent work or so, uh, and uh, a generalization of the work of Konza Moscovici in the calculation of index. So we have a basically, setup that actually explicitly gives you a local formula for uh, index theorem for foliation, basically longitudinal basic index theorem for foliation. So that's going to what I'm going to, uh, what inspired us basically to do this stuff. But the first thing actually, the first person that actually did a rescale bundle was Hickson and another of his student Yi. Uh, basically what they did, they actually give the smooth vector bundle, not over the general deformation to normal cone, but over the tangent groupoid for a spin manifold. So if you have a manifold M that is a spin, it has a spin or bundle. And uh, what they did out of this state, simple data, they basically produce a smooth vector bundle, um, basically a bit bold S sign over the tangent groupoid of that manifold. Uh, as a, if I want to, if you want to see what is this bundle, it's given by the diagram. Basically, you know, the tangent groupoid itself uh, here is given as a basically bunch of copies of the ambient manifold M times M. And also it's given by one copy of the tangent bundle. Basically that in the case, in this case, that's the normal bundle of the embedding of diagonal embedding of M, M sorry, M times M. And over each, uh, basically this um, 
basically this um, fiber, basically part of this tangent group, or you see what is the bundle. The bundle over each part is given by this box tensor product of the spinner with its dual, and over the non-zero fiber part, it is naturally identifiable with the pullback of the exterior algebra. And um, so I want to again remind that this tangent group is a deformation to a normal cone, and it's identified with the calculus spectrum of the Ries algebra of the embedding of m inside m times m diagonally. And the idea of Hickson and Yi was to essentially to def in order to define this bundle was completely algebraic, basically. What they did, they defined a module over this Ries algebra, and they showed the associated sheaf. Uh, the associated shift with this module is going to be locally free of and of finite rank, basically. And that is enough for us to know that's a smooth vector bundle. So that was their basically uh, method. And also they use this bundle. It has, uh, un they just didn't define it for the sake of it. They define it to basically recover what is known as the Getzler symbol calculus of basically differential operators. And, um, and what we're gonna do next, we are actually gonna, uh, I'm gonna tell you what is the generalization of this idea to deformation to normal. I'm gonna give you a the construction in a more general sense. And then later we're gonna come back to this construction and see how it's related to the Getzer calculus yeah. so, and how local index theorem is going to be given. Yes. So uh, like, uh, so like spinners and the exterior algebra, or they, like the, I guess there's like a filtration on, Spinners, yeah. those are great. Like, is, yeah, so, so, is that kind of related to this at all? Yeah, they, they, exactly. I, that's okay. I'm going to talk about it exactly next. So basically, well, how they are related, you know, S tensor, S star, but this is not the box tensor, you see. Box tensor is over M times M, but this is over M. You see the usual tensor product is identifiable with, I don't know, for example, Clifford algebra of TM, basically. And this is uh, identifiable with uh, the exterior algebra as well. Yeah, they are very, very related. Yeah, that's the precise thing of what I was trying to say. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So I will tell you, so the generalization of this idea, how, how it works out, what data you need, and et cetera. Uh, so here, instead of looking at the embedding of diagonal embedding of M side M times M, I will look into actual embedding of a manifold inside a bigger manifold, so M inside V. And I'm going to use that uh, I as an inclusion sign. And so for this data, you need to start with a vector bundle, E, I'm calling it, over that ambient manifold. And so this is the first um, heavy, basically, um, mod I'm throwing at the, at the board here. So if you need a filtration first on um, the E, basically the, the, uh, the restriction of that bundle to that sub-manifold. So as you see, I've called those uh, filtration F1 to, and they are growing to FQ. So basically the order of filtration maxim, as a maximum is going to be Q. And you need also an algebra fil filtration on the endomorphism bundle of this uh, bundle E over V. And you need some compatibility. So these are going to be a very, very natural type of compatibility. Even so this data kind of so far looks for scary, you can actually assume the you start with any vector bundle and you have like trivial filtration because anything has a trivial filtration and everything gonna go through too. So I'm just saying that this is uh, extent of the extent that all construction can generalize to basically. And you also gonna need a connection on this vector bundle with certain properties. You need this, this connection to basically well behave with respect to the two, two filtrations that I just introduced one filtration over that restriction restricted bundle and one filtration over that endomorphism bundle and those are basically very simple filtrate basically assumptions uh basically it says if you look at the restricted connection you will have order zero basically it doesn't change the filtration uh, upon restriction after you applying the connection second you will assume the curvature of this connection has filtration order at most two. So that mm, this K inside gamma of endomorphism, basically two to the two, that is the main basically uh, assumption here. 
And one other thing also you need also that the NABLA, the induced connection from that NABLA connection to the endomorphism bundle also has order zero. And uh, with these three assumptions, essentially what you end up, you can re basically define, um, basically you can define um, uh, over the deform, basically this space D, diff by that I mean the space of um, uh, differential operators basically. Uh, over E, basically on the space of differential operators, you can define a new filtration because differential operators naturally have a filtration given by how many times they are differentiate, differentiating locally, basically, and take the maximum. Here you have uh, basically, um, a, basically a filtration over the endomorphism bundle as well, which is differential operator of the order zero usually. And you use that to basically define a new basic filtration over deformation. Uh, over the differential operators. Basically, locally, you look at as every differential operator as a sum of, I don't know, a bunch of um, uh, this kind of elements, like nabla x1 to nabla xk. Basically, you have this nabla x1 to nabla xk is where we use this one. Basically, this k is going to be the order of differential operator usually. But here, that phi, which is, comes from the endomorphisms, also have a, uh, a filtration, basically a filtration order, you are going to also include that. With this data, you can define very, in a, in a well-defined manner, you can define a new basically order, fil filtration order over the deformation, over the differential operators basically. And that is kind of extends what is known as Getzler order of differential operators in the famous paper of Getzler on uh, super manifold basically. So using basically this notion of the new basically type of order and filtration on the di differential operators, um, you can define a filtration that is known as a scaling filtration on the section of the bundle that I started with. And as you see, this is kind of uh, an in increasing, I actually have to call it decreasing filtration. I don't know. Uh, basically it's maximum, it has ordered negative Q that Q came from here, as you see this order Q comes from this uh, filtration order Q originally. And uh, basically those uh, filtration comes basically from this filtration order formula. You see, I define it as OST, basically that's the filtration order of a section of this uh, vector bundle is defined as a, this very weird type of formula. I, I can give it a whole talk just why this is actually give, give us a filtration and why we use this definition. But this definition is uh, given uh, basically as a minimum over differential operators of the difference between the differential order of these. So this is a new basically filtration we use on differential operators. So we use that basically new definition. And this, by this sign, I mean OF, Essentially, I meant the filtration order with respect to this filtration given in this previous page here of that section. So, and using this, this filtration order, uh, you can define what this gamma case that I mentioned here are. And basically these are sections that have a scaling order, at what that I call, or the uh, scaling filtration order at least K. So one thing I can make about comment also about this, this um, scaling order itself, in a sense, in a rough sense, is can be described as vanishing of that section, vanishing order minus the uh, basically filtration, minus the filtration order F basically. Filtration order from uh, E, restricted to one basically. So on that's basically, I can say is roughly is about. So even so I don't expect everybody to completely uh, digest this data because this is on its own, can be a talk, I have to say. So basically that's how you define what is what we call it as a scaling filtration of gamma uh, of the section of that vector bundle. And out of that, we are going to define what we call it rescaled module. So that module that I was promising that you are defining over this algebra of the um, embedding 
is defined very in a similar fashion. That is, that's how the um, the risk algebra itself is defined, as you see. And as I promised, it's going to be a basically AVM module, like a risk algebra module. And it turns out, you know, work of me with Maxim here, like two weeks ago, we uh, put something in the archive. We show this module, actually, uh, the sheaf of this module associated with this module is um, locally free of constant rank. And it's given by this diagram, basically. Um, uh, the bundle associated to it is going given by this diagram that you see here. So um, that's the basic summary of the construction. So any question before I go to examples? Wait, so the filtration on E originally is only to find on the restriction to M? Yes, exactly. Okay, I, so this is the, the main yes, thing is exactly. trying to propagate this over the yes. entire, okay. Exactly, the, exactly. you propagate it over basically uh, sections of the whole bundle over the whole manifold, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Basically, you can look at it, it's related to Clifford or la, la, next time, I'm, I'm going to watch a show in the, next, uh, in the next example. So going to the applications, let me just first say, this is not an application of this because our work is, is generalized, generalization of the work of Hickson and E. So why don't I just put it here this way? But um, uh, again, they started with the spinner bundle then essentially what they did, they looked at this S box tensor S star over N times M, and they put that connection, I forgot to put the pause there, but they put basically this connection over this uh, vector bundle. This connection uh, over this vector bundle is gonna satisfy all those goody basic assumptions that I mentioned earlier. But first I have to tell you what are those, um, Filtration is basically the um, filtration basically uh, that I have to use here. So the first filtration, I maybe I should have written the first bullet point in a better way. It comes from the restriction, as I said, as uh, also Josh asked, comes from that filtration. Basically, I maybe I should have mentioned it earlier. Basically, as you see here, when you restrict the basically section of S box tensor S star to the basically the diagonal, you obtain this S usual tensor as a star. And as I said, this is uh, identifiable with exterior, for example, bundle or Clifford bundle, and you can use that filtration. And, um, and as you can see, uh, that's the first structure that we need. And the second thing that we need, the filtration we need is a filtration on the endomorphism bundle. It might not be at the first glance clear, but you have this simple isomorphism that endomorphism S box tensor S star is just the endomorphism of S box tensor with endomorphism of S star. And uh, each of them are some Clifford bundles and they have filtration. It turns out these are, gives you all the, these basic filtrations along with the connection that I, I, I earlier mentioned, going gonna have those compatibility conditions. And you obtain what they call in the paper, uh, a spinor rescale bundle. Um, over basically the tangent bundle, a tangent group point of M. And as I said, in, it's given by this diagram. So I'll just repeat it here. So what, uh, let me just also then explain what is the, why we care about risk bundle. I just care about it because it's recovered local index theory in a sense, and, we, and it's very easily generalizable. So it's because of the, we are using deformation to no more language, and deformation to a normal code is a functor, so it's easily you can apply it to manifolds with certain structures. For example, equivalent structure, which I'm going to discuss after this uh, spinor case. So first, let me just tell you the application. What, why is this? I care about the spinor risk bundle. So you know, the, we start with the spinor bundle, and it has a Dirac operator acting on very specific type of operator of uh, first order. And you can look at uh, its heat, heat can be associated with it. So if you look at the heat operator e to the negative t d squared, it has a smoothing kernel because that's a smoothing operator. And it has a smoothing kernel, I call it kt. And this kt, note that belong, or can be looked at as section of 
uh, S box sensor as a service. Those that bundle that we started to construct the risk bundle from, at least what Hexel and Yide. So in a se in separate works of Ludwig and Yi and later me, uh, in my thesis, uh, we separately proved basically this family uh, rescaling basically of this heat kernel, which I denote by S lambda, by basically that is defined as lambda to the n k tau lambda squared, and that tau is a fixed positive number. You can look at this as sections of the rescaled bundle. S, which I previously, or a spin or scale bundle, uh, but defined over the non-zero fibers. But the point is that it gonna extend it smoothly to lambda equal to zero to something, which I denote by k tau h, and that h is for, a while, for, for me was the harmonic oscillator operator. Basically that k tau h is a Mailer's kernel of that harmonic oscillator operator. And that was crucial to uh, obtain, to, to, to know for the calculation of the local index formula, basically for associated with Dirac operators. So this theorem on its own is actually, a, in a sense, it is more stronger than um, local index theory formula because there you need to apply a super trace also to the rescaled heat kernel. But here what we essentially denote, we show that using the rescale bundles, you can actually glue um, a smoothly a rescaling of a heat kernel, of this heat kernel to Mayer's kernel. And they form a smooth section of the rescale bundle. So any question before I step further? Uh, I just want to make sure everybody hears me. Am I still connected? Yeah, we hear you. Oh, okay, perfect. So as I said, uh, it automatically recovers basically the local index theorem and how basically you have to use an, something known as family of super traces that exist. Basically you have a family of certain type of traces because super trace, they are not actual traces, basically trace with respect to uh, Z to grading. Um, and basically he certainly basically denoted that it's such a family of functionals exist on the sections of this rescale bundle and applying this family of functionals to this rescaled basically heat kernel that I just mentioned in the previous theorem um, trivially gives you the uh, local index formula. What's the local index formula is exactly when you calculate this super trace at zero at the Mailer's kernel basically. And that's how you recover a local index theory. Now, what I want to say further here is that this construction, because of the nature of the construction is come from the general rescale bundle of deformation to the normal cone and deformation to the normal cone is uh, a functor, is a very well behaved functor. You can easily take it to manifolds, for example, with equivalent structure. So before I go to uh, those rescale, the other type of rescale bundle that I want to mention, that's related to equivalent uh, manifolds with equivalent structures. Let me just quickly remind you about two formulas. Uh, basically, there are two equivalent index formulas. What is the equivalent index basically in, a, in, in the first place? So you have, assume you have a Lie group, G is given and G acts on uh, basically a manifold M with a Clifford module. If you don't know what Clifford module is, just assume you, you are, is a generalization of a spinners basically in a sense. Assume they have a basic spinners and you assume you also have a Z2 grading, basically I should have said it's an even dimensional manifold. And for any element of that group, you have something known as equivariant index, which is the trace of the action of that gamma, uh, I mean the equivalence of the Dirac operator, that's what I mean. So D that this slash D that you see is just a usual Dirac operator because we have a Clifford module or a spinners, for example. And the action of gamma, gamma on that, uh, basically the kernel of basically D, D that is also decomposable in the basically plus and minus part um, because of the Z degrading, the difference of these traces is going to be what is known as equivariant index. And to calculate this index, there are two type of formulas, what is known as 
uh, Krylov formula basically is given very similar to Atia single index theorem formula, which is uh, you have a generalization of A hats to an equivalent basic A hat genus, and also you have a chain character, which is also an equivalent version of it. And there's also a secondary formula, which is a localized equivalent index formula. And basically you give this formula as an integral over the fixed submanifold of the action of this element gamma that you started with. So that gamma element acts on M and it has a fixed submanifold basically associated with it. And um, you can localize the, that basically that equivalent index uh, uh, with the calculation of that to that some basic fixed sum manifold. So I will tell you these two formulas actually comes for in a sense very easily with a with a with a rescale bundle basically point of view. But you have to find what is that appropriate rescale bundle and what is the deformation to normal cone or type of tangent group point that you have to use. What's S in those formulas? What is S? Oh, so that S is just, I'm so sorry. The, the, the S is a kind of discrepancy in the notation, but those E over S is just a notation. It's basically, it means, uh, I forgot the name, the relative basic churn character, that's what they call. So that's just a notation. That's a very, that S is, stands for the spinners. Basically, uh, every Clifford module is basically, a, locally is a spinners tensor with, uh, an auxiliary basically bundle and basically E over S you know that auxiliary part basically is a chain connected of an auxiliary bundle. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So uh, again, uh, let me first tell you how to obtain a Krylov formula uh, from this rescale bundle point of view and using basically vision of the Nigel Hickson and Zelin Yi in their work, uh, starting with the Lie group. Uh, we define the basic the, pol the quotient of the polynomial algebra of the Lie algebra of the uh, Lie group uh, by um, basic polynomial that vanish to j plus one order. So that by order j plus one, I don't mean, don't mean degree j plus one. I mean polynomials that vanish at zero to j plus one order. And if you define this quotient, we are going to later use it. So this is a base, that quotient I have to also mention, it is filtered by the polynomial degree, of course. And further, you have, assume you have a G equivalent Clifford module. Basically you have a, like, if you, can, like if you don't know again what the Clifford module is, it, you just take the case of a spinners. Like if you have a G equivalent spinners. And uh, look at the diagonal embedding, which we need basically, um, uh, to construct a de basically a deformation space, in this case, going to be tangent group point, and take the vector bundle over that ambient manifold M times M that is given by the box product, like the way Nigel and Zelina started with, but this time also tensor it with the trivial bundle that's given by this polynomial algebra. Yes, so this, you can look at the trivial polynomial, basically that quotient of polynomial algebra as a finite dimensional vector space. And you can also look at it as a trivial bundle over that M times M. So you just tensor it with that uh, E box tensor, E star. So this bundle has a natural connection. The connection that comes very similar to Nigel and Zelin, basically Nabla E tensor with one, again, tensor with one standing one for that uh, basic quotient of the polynomial algebra and one tensor with Nabla E star tensor with one. And finally, uh, the trivial connection, or basically the Durham operator that you take on that uh, trivial bundle D. So you just add all of them together. So this connection, along with certain filtration that we need on this vector bundle to consider. So the filtration that you get over that saw restriction of that vector bundle, in this case, uh, is something I'm going to call it Curtin filtration. I will explain why I call it that. Uh, basically, I define basically this way. I define Cartan order of this filtration as you take the, the usual Clifford filtration that comes from for, from that basically epsilon tensor epsilon star, which is like we have what we had in the case of a spinners plus two times the polynomial degrees. So this is very very similar to the way uh, to the Cartan model of the equivalent cohomology. So that's why I use this basic language. I call it cultural filtration because it's going to be related in the calculation local index. 
And further, the endomorphism of E also are filtered. I didn't expand, I'm not gonna expand it here, but it's very similar to the Carton filtration. In a sense, you have endomorphism of the basically, uh, the E part, E box, so E star. Also you have endomorphism of uh, that trivial bundle part, that quotient of the uh, polynomial basically algebra, which you also put twice weight on that than you put on uh, the Clifford part basically. And using this filtration and that connection that I earlier mentioned, you see they are all compatible. And with this data, you're going to obtain uh, a rescale bundle. And I denoted it by J, well, by, I'm sorry, indexed it by J because you can change the quotient by polynomials of, I don't know, vanishing order J plus, uh, of different J basically. So for any J with a rescaled bundle. So for any J essentially right now, you obtain a vector bundle over the, <clears throat> over the tangent groupoid. And similar to what I earlier said for the case of a Nigel and Zelin, it comes with a free basically family of super traces, which is going to be helpful in the calculation of Krilo formula. So having this data, um, and, uh, here I'm gonna skip a little quick through. Basically you all need to study a different differential operator. Instead of just studying square of differential op uh, of Dirac operator, you need to look at the variation of that what is done at be smooth Laplacian. And um, you have a lot of good information about this basically, um, be smooth Laplacian. And one thing is that the super trace of the heat operator associated with it is just going to give you the equivalent index. So if you um, look at this be smooth hyperliptic Laplace, uh, sorry, uh, be smooth Laplacian, and not exactly the be smooth Laplacian, but the conjugate of it, and look at this kernel, kernel of this smoothing operator, we obtain what I earlier said, what we have for the actual rescale bundle. Basically rescaling of the heat, heat kernel of a conjugate of the smooth Laplacian uh, going to give you a smooth section of this rescale bundle that I just defined over the tangent uh, groupoid and applying that family of super traces going to give you basically the Krilov formula. Does it make sense? Are we good? I'm still connected I, because I don't see anyone. Yeah. Are yeah. Uh, oh, so oh, sorry. Oh, no. Yeah. Got it. I'm so sorry. I, I'm right. Okay. Just, okay, okay. Now you see it? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> So uh, one other example, I, one other basic formula, as I said, you have for equivalent index is the localized basic, the second one that you see, the second bullet point. This can be also uh, recovered from uh, um, rescaled bundle construction. I'm gonna go quickly over that. This time, instead of taking the embedding, diagonal embedding of M and M times M, this time take diagonal embedding of the fixed submanifold of the action of gamma. So this gamma was, that fixed that, that uh, element, fixed element of the Lie groupoid. Uh, sorry, Lie group. I said Lie groupoid. The fixed element of the Lie group, and that M gamma denotes the fixed submanifold of that uh, element gamma. And this time, you're gonna use the original vector bundle that Nigel and Zelin use, basically epsilon box and sorry, epsilon star, and you use the their connection, basically this natural connection that you have over this bundle. And um, you are going to this time obtain out of this data, you uh, in this time, this time there is no Cartan filtration, there is nothing like that. Everything gonna go through like what Nigel and Zelin did. You can show, we show that this bit in a work with um, Yanni Loisiris, uh, Jesus Sanchez and also Chichi Leo. Uh, we showed that this also give you a rescaled bundle uh over this time over different basic deformation space which is the relative tangent groupoid what i mentioned also earlier and i see you see there's a gamma sign because it's really it's basically related to that fixed submanifold m gamma and there is also a smooth family of super traces like before because it's crucial to have this um to calculate basically the local in this formulas and i have to say this uh, finding some such super traces is actually very challenging and it's not because 
everything about this construction, all of them are very functorial and very easy to prove things, basically just using general discal bundle basically language. But this finding the super traces in different contexts actually very, very tricky. So I'm gonna actually later give you another example. You see that. Uh, you're gonna see that in that context, actually it was not, I'm explaining why it wasn't at all trivial. So anyway, so basically the, it's come with this um, smooth family of super traces. This time you go and study heat operator, uh, the shifted heat operator, basically e to the negative t d squared multiplied with gamma. Gamma was a basically action of the fixed Lie group element. And if you look at this kernel and rescale it, you obtain basically again, like the previous result and a smooth section of this new rescale bundle and which extend to something, to something uh, smoothly on the zero fiber, all of them going to be a version of a harmonic oscillator. So that's the main result. And then you apply the super traces as before, and you find basically the localized equivariant index formula. And well, all of this basically result, previous result, you see all of them has the same pattern. So basically we kind of generalize the Getzer symbol calculus or Getzer calculus to um, a lot of basically different contexts. And we actually, I'm gonna actually give you way more generalization of that. So the generalization of that is that instead of looking at the tangent, uh, ta tangent groupoid, you work with an adiabatic groupoid or a version of it basically, or the relative version of it. So the idea is this, so the tangent groupoid is actually, is a groupoid associated with the pair groupoid basically in a sense. So in this point of view, so you adiabatic groupoid in this language is going to be a groupoid associated with a given groupoid, with a general groupoid. So is it, in this sense, you can, instead of working with embedding, diagonal embedding of M instead of M times M, work with an embedding of the unit space of a lead groupoid inside its total space or space of arrows. And in this context, one can basically define what is the generalization of uh, spinners or Clifford modules? We def basically define as uh, what we what is known as a Clifford Lie algebraic module. So these are what you see here is just uh, Lie algebraic of the Lie groupoid G, and you have a notion of also Lie algebraic Clifford connection essentially. And having this data, and also we can extra on this data you put equivariance structure as well. And in this car, in this context, using uh, the least subgroup, or what I uh, least, uh, actually, this is wrong, uh, basically, um, terminology for it, but you can look at the basically fixed submanifold of G unit space by this action of gamma using this notation. Then you have in this context with this data that I just gave you, uh, you can create a rescale bundle out of the pair that I'm just showing you. Basically, you have a Clifford Lie algebra module uh, E, and you just pull it back using R star and S star. What is R star and S star? Those are the range and the source basically maps of the Lie group points. And you have also a natural connection. And out of this, you have a rescaled bundle over the adiabatic group point. But here is a version of adiabatic group point. As you see, it's not a actual adiabatic group point, but it's what we call the relative adiabatic group point. And uh, one can show that the kernel of this, uh, a kernel of the shifted heat operator that you have also in this context as well, gives a smooth section of the rescale bundle that I just mentioned. And examples of this, I know a lot, this is very niche, very specific type of example, is actually you can start with the holonomic group with the foliations and you just, recover equivalent version of a longitudinal index theorem for foliation by Kahn and Moscovici. So that was the power of this basically, this method that we also implemented. And, and I want to also mention that the creation of the super trace in this case was very tricky because there are a lot of options for super trace and you don't know which one gonna work out well. In this context, what you have to use, you have to essentially define, uh, uh, what is known as transverse measure to define the super trace and etc. So I know this part essentially was very heavy. I'm sorry, I 
if you don't know a lot of terminologies here, I completely understand. But I want to say that the, uh, the, what we did essentially was that we generalized uh, like a, um, the, basically the, one of the hardest index theorem or unknown index theorem to even equivalent case, basically, basically equivalence or foliations. And we put also equivalent structure on it. And secondly, we have a way actually in examples that you can actually calculate that equivalent uh, longitudinal index theorem. Uh, basically, look, uh, this low longitudinal index, you can actually calculate it. You can locally see it. And previously, actually, we still don't know what that exactly means because those are not going to give you like a integers or like a, um, something that you can associate with certain space. But at least you have a local formula for them. And that is the power of this method. And finally, I'm going to cool off by another application of this scale bundle. Basically, it's, I hope everybody heard at least about the deformation, written deformation of the ROM operator, which is uh, related to basically uh, Morse inequalities, basically. One actually can recover written deformation and different type of generalization of it. For example, Novikov deformation is another generalization of it. And we can also go for the case of foliation and also equivariant case. So basically the power of this method is this. So let me just explain what's happening. Start with this Riemannian manifold M and take E to be the exterior bundle, exterior algebra bundle with natural Levi-Civita connection you can put on it. It doesn't matter. And start with a Morse spot function. If you don't know what Morse spot is, it's just a generalization of the Morse function. And um, we are going to this time the sub manifold and then basically the manifold that we basically this, the inclusion of manifold that we consider here is the, we take critical points of f inside m and look at the deformation to normal cone of this embedding. So deformation to normal cone of the deformation to the uh, of the embedding of critical points of f into the manifold m essentially. And this time you might ask what is the trivial what is the filtration you get you take on this. Uh, restriction and also on the endomorphism, you just take the trivial filtration. Even so, you might be tempted because the exterior bundle is a graded bundle. So it has a very natural basic grading. So, but here we're gonna ignore all that. If you ignore all that, you're still going to have a risk of bundle. It's a very kind of a trivial in a sense, not trivial bundle, but it's a bundle, but it's not trivial. But in a sense, you use a trivial filtration to construct it. You obtain a Rescale bundle over this deformation to the normal cone of the embedding of the critical points of F inside M. And one can show that uh, this Witten deformation, for example, T squared of this inside of this parenthesis, you are on the left hand side, you see the Witten deformation of the Durham operator is going to smoothly extend to a different, uh, to this basically T equals zero. As a sec as a, as an operator that acting on section of the rescale bundle over that deformation space, and what you might ask, you're gonna obtain what exactly what we expect is the harmonic is a version of harmonic oscillator basically you obtain on the zero prime, and you can easily also extend this to the equivariant case, foliation case, Novikov deformation, which you replace that df essentially on the right hand side of the Witten deformation with any closed form. And that's it. Any question here? And thank you. That's it. <laughs> that's all I wanted to talk about. So this last result essentially wasn't very, uh, very much new. We didn't recover anything new here, but we just recovered defeat and deformation from the construction. Okay. All right. Let's thank off Thank you. Oops. Sorry. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Yeah. I mean, with the uh, Kirillov formula, I mean, mm -hmm. I, don't know, I was thinking you can get like, you know, characters of representations if you like choose M to be like a flag manifold, but then mm -hmm. I couldn't think of anything uh, like containing a flag manifold you might. Mm -hmm. Actually, I I want <laughs> one one thing I was really wondered about that this construction, you know, this 
can be, I don't know whether it can be applied in the algebraic geometry context, like uh, just, just general rescale bundle itself, you know what I'm saying? Like the, if you go a little back, uh, because as you see, if I just use basically this rescale module, that's what I want to say, which I believe you can also construct uh, in the, diff the algebraic geometry as well. And one might also be able to extend these results to uh, not just necessarily case of manifolds, like a case of things that are not necessarily smooth manifolds and different type of embeddings, you know what I'm saying? So I'm sure that's completely possible, but... Uh, right. Uh, uh, Oh, wait, wait, but uh, ah, no, 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 sorry. I, no, I think my thing did make sense. So if you take M to be the flag manifold and you do this tangent thing, right? Yes. This tangent group, group point thing. Yeah. Uh, so the usual index, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you need to cook this up correctly, but uh, like we'll, we'll give you characters of irreducible or you know, finite dimensional representations. I see. Of the I group. See. I see. I see. Yeah. So. I see, I see. So I guess my it, question is, yeah, like, well, yeah, what does this extra lambda thing do to that? I think what it does essentially just give you the a proof of that result, like the proof that why they could, how to obtain the Krilov formula. Uh, that's just right. a proof of that result, you know, basically in a smooth context, however. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't believe that at least the part that I said about the Krilov part, it's not something new because it's actually, we just recovered the Krilov, the proof of Krilov formula. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the localized, basically equivalent index, it actually be generalized to generally basically groupoids, which covers, for example, holonomy groupoids of foliation, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Like there are a lot of examples there to calculate, like something that's really not known. So right now, we have a very direct way to calculate like equivalent indexes in a lot of cases that's not possible. Another also thing that I'm considering to do, basically look at the category of manifold with boundary, as it's a Melrose basically, what beam basically B manifolds essentially, and apply this construct. This, everything here gotta go through basically in that context as well. And what I, thinking about we can basically have, we're gonna have basically Krilov basically formula for manifolds with boundary, but what we gonna get for new is an equivariant basically, eta invariant basically. And this is gonna give us basically a new point of view toward that. And this also can be extended from B manifolds to basically groupoids with boundary. And that gives you, I don't know, I'm, I actually, I'm just speculating right now, but right now that's what, at least with, with regard to this work, that's what I'm trying to look at. But yeah, I haven't gone through that um, way too much. I didn't think about it too much, but I'm 100% sure that the B manifolds is easily um, the case. You can apply this uh, risk scale bonding construction to and get basically a creel of formula and local index uh, basically formula in that context as well. Any other questions? All right, well, let's thank Ahmad again. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. So. Yeah, thank you.